Stay on trade, Rupert. What does it mean for your portfolios? I mean, can, can you start taking advantage if there is an opening or in financial services in China, or is it just you know too soon to tell? I think it's too soon to tell. I mean, I think that this is definitely a kind of uh, risk negative factor that's hanging over markets, particularly emerging markets. And I think these emerging market currencies is the kind of key issue at the moment. We can get onto that. But, uh, you know, the issue with these trade talks is that there's really kind of three different sets of demands really embodied in the kind of three lead actors that have gone out to China for the US. And, and they're, they're all very different. There's the kind of um, uh, Navarro kind of mercantilist approach, which is we've got to reduce the trade deficit. Uh, you've got the um, sort of straight, more straightforward kind of risk reciprocal market access demands. And then you've got this much longer term strategic challenge about Chinese technology and uh, Chinese industrial policy. And I think that the, the scope for success short term really depends on which of these it is that President Trump really minds about. Uh, I think if, if it's either the kind of reducing the trade deficit uh, yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon. There's a few things the mm -hmm. Chinese can do in terms of kind of buying more U.S. cars to, to kind of, you know, move in that direction. But you're not going to get results uh, if it's a, really this technology thing, which I think is the long-term strategic goal for the U.S., which is to try and prevent China becoming a strategic competitor in technology. Um, I don't think you're going to get any success on that either anytime soon, because that is really core to Chinese right. industrial policy, and there's not really anything there they can change. The question is, does Donald Trump really just want some kind of tweetable wins? Right? If you can get, I think what he can get is some moves on, on market access, uh, and uh, that's the big question. You know, you could get a kind of positive outcome if this is the art of the deal, going in with big asks, getting a few small wins in return. I, I'm not sure we can count on that, so I probably would expect that this would be kind of more market negative over the next few months. We will see tariffs getting put in place. We might even see sanctions on more individual Chinese companies. I think all of that could be quite negative. Rupert, I look at our conversation yesterday with Elizabeth Economy in her new book, The Third Revolution. I look at Kishore Mabubani, the giant of Singapore in the Financial Times today, and they both go to the major thrust I do not see in the American media, which is, has the Chinese changed? Is there any indication in London, forget about Mnuchin, Navarro, the Cudlow, all these distractions. Is it the same Chinese face that we've seen for years, or is there a new Chinese attitude? No, I don't think there is a new Chinese attitude on the kind of crucial dimension, which is uh, a determination to uh, move China forward in terms of technology, prosperity, at the same time as ensuring absolute control by the Communist Party. Right? That is really the kind of core of the Xi agenda. Uh, and that means that you are not going to get change when it comes to uh, industrial policy, uh, kind of national technology strategies, and an aggressive pursuit of those goals. And so if, you know, that, I think, is where we're going to see this, this strategic conflict between China and the US that is the new normal. I think we're going to be living with this for many years. Uh, and therefore, some of these measures being put yeah. in place around technology and maybe even tariffs are potentially going to be with us for many years. and We're going to have to get used to living with them.